Hello and welcome back to Death for All. And we're going to be fighting two lake rat vassals here. Obviously, we're not going to be able to eliminate all of the lake rats here, which is obviously a bit sad because, of course, minor factions are almost impossible to eliminate, even with the Death for All mod enabled. Because, of course, you need to get them all in the same battle and you need to get very lucky at inflicting the final death blow on every single one of them. Otherwise, they're just going to continually and infinitely regenerate themselves. And it kind of reminds me of Agent Smith from The Matrix or something like that. You know, it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Infinitely regenerating opponent. Hmm. There's probably a better, a better analogy for that. But that's the one that I came up with right now because I saw something about Hugo Weaving just before this. And I was like, oh, yes, I remember very, very ominous portrayal of Agent Smith. They're very, very cool, in my opinion. One of the best, in my opinion, performances of his career. But obviously, that is very much personal, subjective opinion on my part. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you haven't even seen it. You know, maybe you haven't even seen it. Who knows? If you haven't seen The Matrix, you do need to. But uh, not sure who hasn't. But anyway, point is, I'm going off on a tangent. And that is not what we want to do right now. Because what we want to do is we want to venture very, very deep into enemy territory. I've actually been pretty lucky here. I was able to get into a, an, a battle with a vassal. I was able to um, actually kill, well, not kill him, but he was he was from a minor faction, so it basically made no difference whatsoever. But the point is, I did get into a battle with him. We got a significant amount of loot as well. He had about 80 to 100 units, and obviously, if you know, 80 to 100 units usually results in some pretty decent loot. So I was able to do that, and then I sold some stuff. And we also have a bunch of prisoners here, as you can see. We also have a massive amount of things that can actually level up now as well, because I was getting, as I said, I was getting pretty lucky with the amount of horses, the amount of war mounts that I was able to find in the various marketplaces and in the villages. And for some reason, they now started to be a little bit easier to find. I, I don't even know really what's going on with that. But anyway, let's just move on here to Husan Falk. And what I would like to do, as I said, is head on into Southern Empire territory. Now, what's really funny is that I played, I played Battle Lord a number of days ago, and I actually can't remember what I even did after the episode was finished because I loaded up the game, and I thought to myself, "Wait a minute, did I not save?" Because I only had autosaves available, so I loaded the, the latest autosave. And apparently that was that was a problem? I, I don't know. Apparently that was that might have been an issue or something. But there you go. As you can see, look at that. 30,000 gold in money just literally from loot, which is absolutely amazing. And you can see here that the Southern Empire is having some issues here. So yeah, as I as I say, I'm actually not entirely sure if I have now rolled us back to a certain point beforehand. So if I have, then I apologize. And we're just going to have to uh, play through a little bit more here. But that's the point. Not really that big a deal because we have two enemies to go for here as well, which is actually pretty cool. I do like that a great deal. Let me see if I can actually find some people that might be useful for us. Because you can see here that the Southern Empire has a significant amount of just regular mercenary vassals here. And while, ooh, hello, wait a minute. Do you think I can actually beat an army of this size? I think I might be able to. That's the funny thing. I think I might be able to. Let, shall, shall we try it out? Let me see. Is he? Does he actually want to fight me? He's not really doing much right now. He's thinking to himself, hmm, what is that guy doing? And I'm thinking to myself, yes, what am I doing? <laughs> yes, I don't I don't actually know. To be honest, I think we might be able to do something here. So let's actually see. Okay, yeah, look at that. The combat strength is not looking particularly bad. It's, it's very even. This is definitely going to be one of those times where I think to myself, hmm, should I have done this? I mean, I had the, I had 100% freedom 
basically, you know, 100% freedom to do what I wanted to do here. But I have so much cavalry. I'm thinking, why not? You know, why not? Why shouldn't I go in against this army? You know, we're going to have a significant chance for massive renown gains. Ooh, he blocked it. Sad. I was very much hoping to get that kill there. And uh, yeah, I'm actually doing a little bit better when it comes to using my pole arm as well. Obviously, my proficiency in it is lackluster at the moment, but you know, that's not really that big a deal. We can still get a decent amount of kills, as you can see right there. 107 damage to that veteran outrider. Maybe we're going to be able to get a couple more here as well. Although, to be fair, you know, whenever I have a massive amount of cavalry, whenever I do have cavalry-based armies, I'm always, for some reason exceedingly confused as to where I need to go and who I need to kill because there are just so many of them and usually that's my job you know usually I'm, I make it my job to attack enemy cavalry because most of the time my own forces are not going to be exceedingly good or exceedingly efficient at that particular action so I generally try to do that myself but Anyway, as you can see, look at these guys. Wow, they actually have some Palatine Guards as well. Not a big fan of those, thank you very much. They are going to absolutely murder us if we allow them to. But maybe I can maybe I can actually just run along the... Ooh, ooh, no, we got slowed. No, 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 we're getting slowed. Okay, that's not very good at all. Okay, not too bad. Can I kill that guy? No, I can't. Thankfully, the piercing damage is really coming in mighty handy here as well. Generally, anytime you can get piercing damage or uh, blunt damage you're going to be seeing a lot higher average damage against higher armored opponents because they just generally have a higher penetration value but obviously it's a little bit less important in uh, Bannerlord than it used to be in Warband because if you don't know, on the channel, very recently I've been playing the Prisno mod for Warband. That is one of the uh, highest rated, I think it's probably in the top 10, top 15, I don't even know. Um, I mean, there are so many mods for Warband, but generally it is it is known as a, as a good mod, as a classic mod for Warband. And um, yeah, in that you really do get to see how important a good weapon type actually is because many times i go into a battle and because of various things you know the the new iron flesh skill because you know the mod actually does change the iron flesh skill to no longer only give you two hp per time of taking the skill you actually also gain plus three percent damage reduction so you can imagine what can happen later on down the line, you know, when you're actually fighting higher tier units, when you're fighting these, uh, you know, tier five, tier six units, and maybe even, I don't know, I don't know, do they have tier seven units? I'm not entirely sure. But whatever the case, when you're fighting something very high tier, they're most likely going to have, you know, seven, eight, maybe nine, maybe even 10 iron flesh. And that's going to provide them with a significant damage reduction bonus, which indeed is then going to make a difference in how much you can even do to them. And you can see here, we actually ended up losing a huge amount of our cavalry units. But is that is that a big problem? Not really, because we actually survived here and we were able to um, potentially take all of these people prisoner. I'm actually not going to be doing that, though, because I'd actually like to level up. I'd like to level my, uh, my charm Stop skill up. And we're actually uh, rescuing some people as well, which is quite nice. And there we go. We can also take these guys. Uh, yeah, they're, they're doing that same thing again. Okay, so wait a second. How do... Uh, someone said that I can... Um, uh, ah, here we go. Yes, there, there we are. Okay, so yeah, this is the, uh, the drop-down menu that someone told me about. Thank you very much for this. And let me just do that. There we go. And now I can take all of the high-tier troops in one fell swoop. And uh, personally, I actually really liked the fact that they did that automatically before and I didn't actually have to do anything, you know, myself. So I didn't have to click the drop down menu or anything, but it's not really that big a deal. It's nice to have a little bit more customization, I suppose, in what you want to take. But I'm not sure why anyone would want to take lower tier prisoners. I suppose if you want to recruit them a little bit faster, potentially, that might be that might be a thing. But um, yeah, anyway, let's just take all of that loot there. 
And uh, then we can actually see if I uh, if I gained... Oh, yeah, look at that. We've got 250 in charm skill now, which is really nice. And you can see here, double the relation gain for helping lords in battle. And you also gain plus one companion limit as well. Now, what I actually really would like is immortal charm. Of course, you know, <laughs> considering we have uh, such a significant amount of focus points in charm skill, it is inevitable that it would be a good idea to get immortal charm. But... What I'm currently reeling from at the moment is the fact that I need to spend another attribute point in social to be able to get this charm skill point uh, to 275. In my opinion, at least, I will need this. Otherwise, it's just going to take way too long. Or maybe maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be okay. But for me personally, I think it's probably going to be necessary, which is very sad. Anyway... Lancer, plus 20% damage bonus from speed with pole arms well mounted. Sounds pretty good to me, so I'll take that. And we're going to be, uh, we're definitely going to put another focus point in there. Sounds, sounds good. All right. So, yeah, there we go. We actually did end up achieving victory. I ended up losing around 50 units, though, however, which is very costly indeed. However, we did eliminate a very large army. A very large Southern Empire army. Oh, we've got the Kuzate here as well. Oh no, that's pretty terrible. Okay, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that at all. Okay, I'm just going to do an auto-resolve here against these guys. I don't really care about them too much. Uh, I don't have enough space for the rest of these prisoners. I'm just going to do this. There we go. And we should also probably equip our party. There we go. Yes, I love these mods that just equip everything automatically because it makes it so much so much simpler for you so you don't need to worry about messing around with your inventory or anything like that and you can just very quickly and easily click a button and then everything is sorted out for you and oh look at this rustica is now pregnant once again i i believe you actually saw her give birth to another child um in the previous episode but i i could be wrong about that of course not entirely sure. But um, if you did miss out on that, then, well, I'm very sorry. Uh, but if you didn't, then, uh, well, there you go. That, that, that's exactly what's happening right now. Okay, so I should probably sell some things, shouldn't I? I mean, there's only 20,000 here, but we can make another 15,000, which is actually rather nice. And there is a tournament going on. I'm not sure if I really want to do the tournament, all things considered. I should probably go and sell my prisoners, however. So that's another 5,000. Wow, that was actually... Okay. Only 45 troops, and yet I was able to get 5,500 from that. Very interesting. All right. So yeah, anyway, I think a, pro a, a good course of action right now would probably be for me to go to all of these villages and try to get some more of these high-tier troops. That's generally what I've been trying to do over the course of my off-screen time as well. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we're, yeah, uh, unfortunately it seems to be, yeah, once again, quite difficult to get war mounts. Obviously there's just one there, but in a number of the places that I, I have been to in my off-screen time, I was able to find multiple war mounts. So I'm talking about two to three in each village, and usually that is not very possible but yeah look at this oh oh wait 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 look at that a massive amount of vassals were killed just now and one of those was actually an azrai vassal so i don't think we really need to worry too much about that okay we have valeria here valeria is attempting to besiege this castle that is not going to work i'm sorry valeria i am going to have to attack you in just a moment not sure why my... Me oh, yeah, my medicine skill is terrible, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I actually need to do that. Right, okay, yeah. So we are going to literally... That is, that is our next major quest. And it's not even an official quest or anything like that, but that is kind of like our... Um, I don't know, kind of like our self-appointed task. And we're going to need to find... A companion <laughs> with medic skill. Or at the very least, find someone that is actually relatively good at medic skill. I might actually try to shoot a couple of these guys. They're not having... Oh, no, no. Oh, that was that could have been real bad. Okay. Yeah, that could have been real bad. Let me just be a bit more cautious, shall I? But um, yeah, anyway. So that is the thing that we really do need to do. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with a... Um, regeneration rate of something that is just 
that of a snail, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you can see how long it's actually taking for my own forces to recuperate and get back on their feet after the uh, large army engagement that we had. And I gotta say, I'm actually pretty happy with the fact that we were able to achieve victory with that. Because initially I was thinking to myself, well, I know I have a lot of cavalry. And usually, if you have a lot of cavalry or if the AI has a lot of cavalry, your or them are much more likely to achieve victory just from that. Just from the fact that they have horses. And that's not saying that it's impossible to win. You know, if you uh, have infantry or archers in your army alone, you know, because that's, you know, that's something that I've done and I'm sure many other people have done as well. You know, set yourself a, yeah, well, not, not really a challenge, so to speak, but maybe you just want to play with a particular army type. And in which case, well, it, it's so fun. It really is. It's really fun to play with an archer-only army because you then have to play significantly differently. Really, really fun to do that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there's uh, there's Valeria. We're just going to let her go. Unfortunately, she was not killed. We can also release Diul here too, which is quite nice. And we're going to be getting some more level ups too, which is rather good. All right, let me go. Let me just take some more loot. And there we have it. Okay, so yeah, you can see here, look at this. We still have 21 wounded troops after that battle, which is the main... The main point I'm getting at, you know, the main that, that is the main point I'm getting at right here. That's the reason why we need that we need that medic. So I'm thinking we're gonna just auto resolve against this one. We might lose some people, but that's that's fine. I'm I'm happy just to just to get the uh, get the fight out of the way really, and uh, then we'll go over to the town, sell our prisoners so that we don't move too slowly. And yeah, once again, look at this. Uh, I mean, you you see how slow this actually is. I think it's like what one troop every hour or something like that i mean that's not particularly bad but it is it is pretty slow <laughs> all things considered okay so let me actually just take a quick look here because i know someone actually said in the comments thank you very much for this by the way but someone did say what you need to look for to be able to um uh, this one willow bark i believe is a uh, um is a medic Yes, I think so. Uh, uh, yes, the scholar might also be a medic. Mm, wait a minute, is she? A, no, no, no. Long knife is a is a roguery skill person. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I haven't even met any of these. It's oh, it's extremely annoying that they are now. You know, you you, you can't tell where any of them are. So now I'm just like, okay, well, where do I go? Yeah, that's um. That's not particularly good, is it? Oh, well, never mind. Well, what can we do? What can we do apart from just attempt to find them? But uh, yeah, I, I, you know what I kind of wish? I kind of wish that maybe there would be something that could be added that would make it so that you could, uh, I don't know, send out your very own messenger or like a, a recruiter or maybe what you could do is you could go into a tavern and say to one of the tavern keepers, hey, could you keep a lookout for... A companion that knows about this thing whatever this thing is so i'm talking about like you know for example in my in my particular case let's say you want medic skill and you say to the you know you say to the uh, the tavern keeper hey can, can you look out for a companion or, or a person that's really proficient in medic skill and then they go, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, you know, that will be uh, 500 gold per day. Or that will be 1,000 gold per day or 5,000 gold per day or however much it is going to be. You know, because obviously he's not going to do it for free. You know, and they're not going to do it for free at all. But that is something that I think would be, I think that would be pretty cool. You know, I think that would be pretty cool because that would actually make sense. If you are a, a wanderer, a hero in the land of Calradia, and you want to find someone, because let's face it, it's a pretty large map, right? I mean, look at this. Look at this thing. There are so many different towns, and it's almost impossible to assume that you're going to be, um, you know, finding the person that you need to find. Uh, this guy's actually really good, by the way. He has really amazing combat skills. So I'm actually thinking that I'm going to be recruiting him as it is. 
And um, let me actually just take a quick look. How many companions can I have? Oh, I have loads of space for companions. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. So yeah, you can see here that we have two children. And uh, obviously Rustica and Bruce are staying at Habyar. I think Habyar is a... Ooh, yeah, that's a bit dangerous. If we are going to be at war against someone in the future that could potentially come down here, obviously, you know, the Azurai have fought back very viciously so far. And they haven't really been having too many problems about, you know, maintaining their front lines. But let's just say that the Southern Empire starts to push back or the Kuzet or whoever, and um, they start to lose towns again, you know, so Razik and uh, Sahel Castle and, and then eventually Habyar. So them being there is actually pretty risky, you know, so it's a bit a bit of a risk, not, not particularly good. Anyway. Let me just uh, go and place him. There we go. He's now equipped a bunch of stuff. Just going to give him that, that shield right there. And, and as you can see, he's actually put on some pretty nice stuff. So now let me just have a look. Okay, yeah, he is a polearm user for the most part. So we're just going to give him that lance. And apparently that is the best lance for him, which is a bit weird. I'm actually not entirely sure whether that is indeed the case. No, no, there we go. The Druznik Lance is actually the best for him. Okay, that's good to know. And we could potentially give him one of these. Increase his mount movement speed. Yeah, I think increase mount movement speed sounds like a good idea. There we are. Nice. All right. So, yeah, anyway, as I was saying, I think it would be pretty cool to be able to hire someone, whether it is the tavern keeper or not. I think it would be a, a pretty... I don't know, maybe, maybe a simple thing to do? I, I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe it would be a bit more difficult than, uh, than I anticipate, but I think that would be rather nice because then it would very much enable, you know, you as the player to be like, okay, well, I have, you know, in my case, I have 200,000 gold, right? So I have 200,000 gold. I'm not really hurting for money right now. I could easily spend another 1,000 per day or something like that or... Uh, however long, you know, it doesn't really matter how long, to be honest, but uh, until someone appears that has medic skill, and then I would That's be able nice to enough. send them a message or something like that, and I could say to them, hey, can, do you want to join me? And then they go, yes, or no. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe they would decline in some cases. I, I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, I, I find it a bit strange, actually, that the companions all want to join you every single time you ask them. But that is their purpose, of course. But from a realistic standpoint, it's highly unlikely that every single person would want to join you because maybe they don't agree with your ideology. Maybe they don't agree with the faction that you're currently associated with. You know, because, um, I mean, that's I guess that's the problem with um, randomly generated, uh, randomly generated um, companions for the most part. Because you're then inevitably not going to have the same kind of rich background that you might be seeing with, you know, different companions. Like, for example, Warband. You know, obviously I was talking about Warband earlier in the episode. And um, not, not specifically Perizno here, of course, but I'm talking about in general. In Warband, companions are much more static in the way that they think about things. And they have a lot more complaints and I, I got to say a lot more it, it feels like a lot more personality which is a bit sad because I, I think that generally you know if it's uh, the next iteration of a particular franchise I feel like you know everything should be improved right but obviously they went for a different slant on things and I, I that's the thing I like the I like the randomly generated element as much as the next person um, and to a certain extent they're not they're not random as much as you might think because they, they're all sharing relatively similar suffixes and they do share a naming pool as well because you might imagine that this guy that we just recruited just a minute ago, the, the golden guy, that suffix is, is quite common. I've seen quite a few, uh, you know, quite a few companions named that. But anyway, the point still stands. It feels to me like you may benefit more from having companions that are going to complain sometimes and they're maybe going to be like oh you're you're associated with the Azurai the Azurai murdered my family or something along those lines you know what I mean that kind of 
that kind of lore would actually be pretty fun, you know, because maybe, I mean, maybe, I don't know, what, what do you think? Maybe it would be a bit, um, maybe it would be a bit annoying. It might actually be a bit annoying, who knows, because obviously if you think about the fact that maybe sometimes because of the randomly generated nature, you might not have multiple companions that even have medic skill in my case obviously medic skill is what i'm what i'm wanting here but let's just say that there's only one of them in the entire game and because they have a problem with a particular faction and i'm part of that particular faction this is just theoretically of course then maybe they're not going to want to join you and then you're going to be out of luck but that again is just a case of well that's kind of cool because it's a bit more organic then you know it's a bit more organic a bit more uh, a bit more realistic, I suppose you could say. But anyway, we're just going to get rid of a couple of pieces of food here because I have way too much. And I wouldn't mind buying some uh, more uh, more beer and all that other stuff. You know, a little bit more variety never hurt anyone, right? Yes, indeed. All right. So, yeah, we're actually going to be heading on over to Vlandian territory. That sounds like a pretty decent idea. Let's Oh, let's vote for the owner of this thing. It's actually... Um, yeah, yeah, let's just let's just vote. Look at that. Massive amount. 70 influence being spent here, which is perfectly fine. I mean, what what is influence for if, you know, for me not to spend it? And we have 256 in charm skill now. We might actually make it to, to 275 much much quicker than I anticipated, but that's that's better, than, you know, that's better for me. That's better for me. I'm I'm very happy with that. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So there is a peace offering going to be coming up with the, who is it, with the Southern Empire, right? Yeah, with the Southern Empire. Okay, that's actually really good. So that means that uh, we can concentrate on the Vlandians, because obviously the Vlandians have just declared war. I'm actually looking for horses right now from these tournaments. I'm not wanting to go into a tournament that is going to provide me with a, a mere chest piece or a, a helmet or anything like that, even though those things can actually be very good still. I'm just looking for the additional cash injection or indeed a mount that we can use to level up some of our troops. And uh, yeah, I am, I'm now back down at 126 troops as well, which is very sad because obviously I had 100 and 160 or something along those lines. But of course, you know, we went into the battle. We were fully expecting to lose quite a few units considering we did have a... Uh, it was an even battle, you know? It was an absolutely even battle. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, this guy. Hello there. Look at him. All right, so this guy is a medic companion. And we're going to be getting him. Yeah, we're going to be getting him. Okay, fantastic. That is absolutely perfect. Now we can actually give him some additional gear. Uh, give him the shield. And what else is he actually good at? Is he good at anything else? Uh, he's always oh, good at throwing skill, surprisingly enough. He is good at throwing skills, so I guess I will just give him both of the throwing weapons that I have available to me. Is he good at riding skill? No, he is not. Otherwise, he would have equipped a horse. No, he's not good at riding skill at all. Okay, good to know. So now we have a companion. Great, look at that. We actually found one. So that means that what I can do is we can actually set him up as our medic. And now we have around 70 medicine skill, which is actually pretty cool. And it didn't even take us that long, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. But um, it was definitely not the guy that I thought that we were going to get. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode, because we're going to be making our way over to Vlandian territory. Maybe I'll make a brief stopover in the areas around the Western Empire as a right border. They've they've actually taken Kuyas, which is mm, a little bit a uh, little bit worrying right there, but. Yes, I'm going to make a brief stop over here, try to get some more war mounts, try to get some more noble units, and then we'll be heading on over to Vlandian territory and we'll try to fight a couple of those, maybe inflict some casualties to their forces. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.